Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com and this is video number four in a series on an introduction to Power BI Desktop and in this video we are going to be writing some DAX formulas to create some measures. Now there are certain questions that we want to know from our data here. And we're going to solve those by writing some DAX. And then in the following video, we're going to start creating our visuals and our dashboards ready to publish. Some of the questions we would like to know. Firstly, how many subscribers did we get this calendar year? We then want to know how many of those subscribers subscribed to the free membership that we offer and how many of them took up that premium subscription that we offer. We then want to know the total revenue. So there is a charge for that premium subscription and that is coming from our uh, D product dimension table and we want to total that. We want to know the total revenue and then we'd like to know the percentage of the subscriptions that were premium. So out of that total, what percentage were premium? So they are our five questions to solve with some DAX formulas right now. And we'll then look at how we can use and reuse those both in other measures, but then also in our visualizations. Now the first thing I want to do, I'm in my data view at the moment, is click on the subscribers table on the right hand side so that that is the active table and then to the modeling tab above I can click on new measure and that will open my formula bar to write my first measure and you can see how it begins to appear within the subscribers table. Now this first one is the number of subscribers that we got. So I need to type a name for my measure and I will call it total subscribers equals so when you write a formula in Excel when you begin with the equal sign we're kind of beginning with it here now name of the measure equals to kickstart the the calculation aspect of it now I'm going to use a DAX function called count rows remember from the previous video that when we are writing in this formula bar we can hold down our control key and scroll with our mouse wheel to increase the font size and zoom in on this formula bar area. A really handy little shortcut. Count rows is what I want, so I'm going to double click on that function. And you see it prompts me for a table. This will just simply count how many rows are in a table, and it works for me. I want to know how many subscribers, so I'm just going to count the rows in the subscribers table. Let me double click on that, close off my bracket and press enter, and the measure is created on the right hand side in my subscribers table. First measure is done. Now if I wanted to test quickly if that measure appears to be working, there are a few different ways of doing that. But a nice quick way would be to switch to my report view and just drag that measure onto the page. And that will quickly create a visual. It may not be what you want, may not necessarily be what you're after ultimately as a visual, but sometimes this can give you, you know, that uh, the idea as to whether it seems to be working or not. I can see it's just shy of one million. And if I hover over 942079. 942079. I'm going to delete that visual and go back to my data view. Look at that at the bottom, 942079. So that first one, we've got an absolute confirmation. That is how many there are. Next up, I want to know how many free subscribers. So make sure my subscribers table is active. New measure. This one, total free equals, and I'm going to use count rows again. 
tab key as I arrow down. This time though, I'm looking for a subset of that data set. So I'm not looking at how many in total, I'm looking at how many were free. So I'm going to bring in the filter function. This will allow me to provide a Boolean expression and filter into a subset of that data. I'm only looking at a specific range from there. So the table will be subscribers, comma, the filter expression is going to be if subscribers, and I am testing the product field, is equal to free inside some double quotes. Close bracket for filter function, close bracket for the count rows function, press enter, and we have ourselves another DAX expression. What I'll now do is a quick selection of that, and I'm going to take a copy with my Control C keyboard shortcut. And then with my subscribers table selected, new measure, I'm going to just paste that in with my Control V shortcut. And I'll just change free to premium and free to premium over here so that we can get a total for the premium memberships. So when we are creating our visuals and we're putting them into our column charts or our, our matrices, and then we'll be able to add slices. And a lot of you watching this video, even if you might be new or a kind of beginner to Power BI, you may well be quite familiar with uh, pivot tables and with the use of slicers. And obviously we can provide filters through things like slicers and through you know, the axes of a chart, and that provides that filtering aspect. And I can still do that to the result of this measure. I'm just kind of hard coding a filter into it. So this will only be premium, and then you can filter it any other way you want through other filtering tools that are available in Power BI. So there's three of our questions done, three of our measures, all in the subscribers table. With the subscribers table selected, new measure. Next up, total revenue. So I'm going to call it total revenue equals. Now I'm going to reuse my measures here. So as a default rule, when you're referring to a field in a table, like I was in the previous measures, I reference the name of the table, subscribers, and then the field within it, product. Right now, when you're referring to a measure, you only reference its name. So even though the measure exists within the subscribers table, I don't mention the subscribers table. This makes it easy for people when they're looking at DAX to know if it's a reference to a measure or a field within a table. So I want to know, if I want to know the total revenue, what it is, is the number of premium members multiplied by the price that we sold at. Now the price is inside the D product table and the number of premium subscribers, we've just calculated that. We just created a measure that does that. So let's refer to it. Total premium, there's the measure. Double click. And notice the measure has square brackets around it, just like the field of a table does, which is why I emphasize or encourage the use of putting a table name before a field, not with a measure. So people looking at this know, ah, no table name, must be a measure. After that, multiply the asterisk. And I want to refer to the D product table, open square bracket price. Now at this point as I'm typing, it should start ringing alarm bells because I'm typing and I'm not getting any list helping me select a field from D product. And it was doing that in the previous measures, but it's not doing it now. Let me carry on. Price, close square bracket. And I press enter. And I'm getting an error. A single value from the column price in the table D product. So it did understand my syntax there that I was referring to a field in the table. But it tells me it cannot be determined. 
shouldn't have been a surprise because of the lack of assistance I was getting. Asked me to provide an aggregation function. Now, inside the D product table, there is only one price. It's just one row with a price. It's not like we've got loads of subscribers like we do in a fact table. This is a dimension table. So, you know, I could use the max function, or, you know, or some. There's a few different functions I can use, really. But if I go back to my total revenue measure, you can see it on the right-hand side here with a warning sign indicating that it's not happy. Let me click on it, come back into my formula, and I'm going to throw the sum aggregation function just before it. Sum open bracket. Look how it's quite happy with the list coming up now. Close bracket the other side. Press enter. Now it's working. Total revenue. The measure is done. One more measure to go. How many of the subscribers as a percentage were premium? Make sure the subscribers table is selected. New measure, last measure here. Percentage premium equals. Now, to know the percentage that were premium, we want to divide the number of premium subscribers by the total subscribers. That will give us that percentage. So, if I do total premium divided by total subscribers using the measures that I've created just referencing them and press enter that gives me that result I can check this out by going to my report view and dragging percentage premium onto a page and you can see I get 0.41 in a decimal there's a percentage at the top so that quick little column chart shows me that that sounds about right 0.41 if you had an idea of your data so that is working fine in this example but if I come back to my measure here what I would like to mention is a really useful DAX function called divide because although I'm quite happy dividing here and it's working as you may know from using Excel, that you can throw up div slash zero errors and you can get issues when you're doing things like divisions. Now in DAX, there is a divide function and this, as they call it, is the safe divide. It has the ability to handle the divide by zero scenario. So unlike Excel, where we may throw in kind of if error functions or something to try and avoid those potential issues of blank cells and zero cells. So in divide function, I haven't put my bracket in, there it goes. The numerator is total premium measure, comma, the denominator is the total subscribers measure, comma, the alternate result, you know, instead of an error, if there's zeros, I'm just going to type a zero in. It's not happening in this scenario, but that's that's my alternate response. Close bracket and enter, and there is no real difference here. If I went back to report and drag that in, I've got another 0.41, but that is a, a useful alternative if you're doing a measure like that, is to use the divide DAX function. Uh, it's something that we don't get in Excel, and it's really nice to have. So we have five measures set up. You can see them in our table with a little calculator icon next to them, indicating to people that they're measures. We are going to be using those to create some beautiful interactive visuals in the next video. So stay tuned, check that out, and this will be the culmination of this Power BI desktop series.